Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Dukas. And in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing you how you can get your Figma files. Let's say you have like some type of UI kit or some type of template, and then you can eventually use AI to get the components from that specific Figma file, and then eventually create different remixes of different designs, different prototypes based on those main components from Figma. So just to show you a quick example, we have this basic dialog box with a title, with a description, with two buttons that are on the right side, aligned to the right of the card. This is inside of Figma, and this is using the Material UI design system. And basically what I did is I transported it into this AI tool over here, which I'm gonna show you in a sec, and we get the same design, plus we can ask the AI to create different layouts from this from the same design, we can ask the AI to create different like color variants and also different types of styles. As you can see, different types of button styles, different types of rounding, different types of shadows, different elements being added. And not only can you do this like with basic little cards, you can do this with entire interfaces. So this is exactly what we're gonna be doing today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. But before we dive into today's video, I'd love to invite you guys to my Discord community we are a bunch of different startup founders, designers, developers from all around the world. And we get together every single weekday to talk about different tools, different topics, different challenges in our lives. So if you guys are interested in joining that, link to that is down in the description below. Now let's start from an easier component, right? Let's start from this one. We can just click on this little dialog card over here. And right now we're in design mode. So over here you can see this little blue design mode icon. But if we switch to dev mode, this is where we get a little bit more transparency when it comes to code. So we have over here um, a, a bit of a documentation as to what this model is because this is using some type of UI kit, right? We get um, the component behavior over here, um, which you can read a little bit more about. But what's important to kind of bring into this other tool, which is called Magic Path, is the code, right? So recommended code, component name, alert dialog. So what you wanna do is you just want to copy this code over here, this compose code, and when you start off in Magic Path, magicpath.ai, you're gonna get something like this when you start off with a new component. What you wanna do is you just wanna double click somewhere like this and going back into Figma, we wanna, we wanna just kind of understand the structure here, right? This is kind of like the, the main uh, code from this specific component. And down, then down here we have the layout and we have the style. So we want to create a alert dialog card with this code and with this layout and style. So all you have to do is just copy these, these codes. So we wanna say, we wanna say, let's create an alert dialog card with this code. We also wanna say with this layout. And over here, we just wanna copy this and paste this and then shift enter with this style. And then we just do the same thing, copy and paste. And another good thing to do if you have a small component like this, this is just a very small component. You can take a screenshot of this or you can export it as an image however you want. And then you can just place that in here. I'm just, I'm not gonna do this for this one, but it just provides a little bit more context for the AI. And then you can just click on submit. And then once that's generated, you have a few options, right? Up here, we have the ability to create a flow, which basically creates an extra component using the same context as this same component. So it's gonna understand the fonts the colors, the spacing, the border radius, and so on and so forth. You can also create variants, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. So I'm gonna create variants, I'm gonna click on this, and over here we have, a diff we have a few options. We have different layout, different style, different color. Let's start off with different color, just to kind of give you a simple um, idea or example of what, of what this is, right? So we click on different color, we can choose variants, like three variants, right? And let's click on submit. And as you can see down here, that's where it starts to generate the different components. And so we're gonna have this main one, and then these are gonna be the three different color variants. And boom, as you can see, we get blue, we get yellow, we get this green. So this is kind of like the first very basic step of how to use this. And once you're back in Figma, you can start adding more things, right? We can, for example, add different types of assets like um, like buttons, for example, we can add like like this button over here, or maybe like this button. We can add a bunch of other types of components, like as you can see over here, more cards if we wanted to, like, like this one. And then we can use that same process to bring this into Magic Path and then have that specific component into, in, inside of Magic Path. So for example, for this one, we want to create, let's say, let's actually move this over here to the side and create these new ones. And we wanna say, let's create a date picker component 
with this code, right? And the same thing with this one, right? We can start bringing in all of these different components into Magic Path. And the whole idea is to have these separate components and then kind of put them together into one bigger component. And sometimes some components will just give you the image and it'll just give you the layout and style. But it's just important to kind of give the AI here as much information as possible. So if you don't have that initial code, um, that for example, something like this would have, as you can see this up here, this compose, right? It's totally fine. Just take a screenshot and then just provide it with these layout and style codes. And anyways, now inside of Magic Path, we have, let's say four components, right? From this specific library inside of Figma. Now, before I was showing you the actual uh, different tools that we have up here, right? We have create variants, but we also have create a flow. And if I click on create a flow, if I do this and I click on one of these, I can create a new type of component based on the context of this original component. So we have a date picker over here, but what if we want like, let's say like a product card, for example, you can say a create a product card with an image, with a description text, with a pricing uh, text, and then we can click on submit. And what that does is that it creates this new component that is connected to this main component up again, it's connected with the context of this main component. And then as you can see, we get the same type of design, right? We get this like purple-ish background. We have the button with the purple color, with the white font, with the black font on the card over here. And you can build other components like more interactive ones. Like for example, this is like a timer component, for example, if you really need it. But just to give you a quick example of what types of things you can build with this flow tool. And then at the very end, you can have a nice like little collection of all these different components that you like, and then eventually combine them, right? You can make like a landing page, for example, or like a dashboard with these different components. So in order to do that, what we can do is we can just double click again. Let's make this a little bit larger. Let's actually click on this browser and we can make this a little bit longer like this. And let's choose Gemini 3 Pro as our main model, right? Because that provides us with the best uh, model for design work. It excels at turning images into code as well. Just, you know, a quick tip for you guys. And then we can say create a stunning dashboard with the at date picker. We can choose date picker, date picker long, which is this one. We can do comma at, uh, let's choose the label component, label component for the top section. And then we can say, and the material text field for the text input to search for data in our database. And while this loads, we have themes as well. So you can bring in your own type of theme. For example, this is like the default one, but if we choose like, for example, IBM Carbon, which is my favorite one, we have this IBM Carbon theme with its own typography, with its own, with, with its own effects, with its own rules, right? And we can choose one of these themes and build something with these components that we brought from Figma, but turn them into this custom theme that we have. So again, we can use the same, the same prompt, but this time we're gonna choose our IBM carbon theme. And we just want to, again, link everything, and then we can go ahead and submit this. And once it's done generating, we get these two different examples over here. We have the one on the left, we have the one on the right with our custom theme applied to it. Obviously the one with the custom theme looks much nicer, but if you click on the state picker, this state picker pops up. We have um, specific graphs. We have our mobile or our nav bar up here. And the same over here, right? We have our little search bar over here. We have this date picker over here on the right. We have this on the top and everything is interactive, right? It knows the date, it's December 2nd. It knows what date I'm picking over here. We can search for a specific text over here. This doesn't exist, but if I just click on D, then they filter out to the D ones. Eventually we can make these different nav, nav points work as well. We can make this menu work as well. It's all working code, right? So you can basically just get this, bring in your components from Figma, remix it here, and then basically open it in anti-gravity or in cursor. And then over there, like basically connect it to APIs, add a, add a database and so on and so forth. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know down in the comments below. And like always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.